When I start a Streamlit app, I usually have all of the files within the same folder. Now this is great when I'm experimenting or when I'm trying to develop an idea, but that soon becomes very messy. As you can see in this example here, we have our app.py, which most of us will start out with, and that contains our Python code. Now the example here is very small, but this can grow arms and legs, multiple functions, multiple classes, and different machine learning model. And also we have a number of output files here. We've got output.csv, output.model2.csv, and we end up with the issue that we sometimes encounter when we're working on any dissertation or essays, where we've got multiple versions of our file, with underscore final, 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 that can get very confusing, especially when you come back to it later on, and I'm sure we're all guilty of that at some point. So the first thing that I like to do is separate out my data. So I will have a folder called data, which contains my input data, and then I will have a folder called output. Depending on what I'm doing, if I'm running multiple machine learning models or different models, I may then subdivide that output folder into something uh, that represents what I'm doing. So here I will move my two output files and put them into the output folder and then my data CSV into the data folder. So that moves them out of the way. Now that's great. So we've got some structure, but what happens when we start to expand our app? What happens if we want to add a sidebar to our app? What happens if we want to add a widget that we want to call up on multiple times? Or what happens if we actually want to have multiple pages within our Streamlit app? Well, this is where we start to apply more structure. Not only that, it will help your sanity when you're working with larger projects. So anyone who has worked with Streamlit will know that Streamlit supports multiple pages. This is great if we want to have different pages for models or different visualizations or information. We can separate some of that information out and we can put that into its own folder called pages. And in here we need to add a few files so we can create page one and dot py and that will be our page one. And we can also repeat this again, for example, if we had data visualization.py as a separate page, then we could put it in there. And now that contains, that separates my pages out into their own folder. So we would need to modify our code slightly now that we've arranged some of our folders. One thing that we need to do is sort out our data CSV. And I'm just keeping this as a relative path at the moment. We can put it in the absolute path if we want, if we're going to specify anything specific that's not contained within our data folder. Now, what if we end up having multiple equations or multiple functions and classes? That could get very confusing very fast within this single app.py file, where we are scrolling up and down looking for specific functions or trying to jump to them in VS Code. So what I tend to do is if I'm going to start working with multiple equations, for example, I will create a new folder called source and that will contain a subfolder. For example, I will have a new folder in here called calculations. And we can then put in our Python, Python file here. So just say petrophysics for uh, my equations. And in my main app, I would then have to import that. So from src dot pet, uh, dot calculations import petrophysics. So for example, I may have a simple porosity equation, such as this one, a density porosity. And then in my app.py file, I may then call upon that as uh, simply as petrophysics dot porosity density and then I can pass in any of my parameters so bulk density matrix density and fluid density and then we can we've got that all separated out very nicely and very cleanly now there may be occasions where we want to reuse widgets or even create a, a sidebar that we may want to use in multiple apps but to do that we can create a subfolder within the SRC folder called components and this is where we put in the likes of our sidebar so we can add sidebar and then in our main app we can then import that again so from src.components import sidebar 
So we can then add it into our code and for example I may have a function in there called show which will show the sidebar. In this case I don't have that so it uh, will probably throw up as an error uh, when we try to run this. Now that's great so we've separated out components and we've separated out our calculations. And you can see it's starting to look a little bit more structured and clean on the left hand side in our data browser and our code is also looking clean so our sidebar code is in our own sidebar pi file and our petrophysics calculation is in its own file as well. So we've got that all clean and tidy. Now, if we are developing this as a fully fledged Streamlit app and we want to deploy it at some point, and we're going to need tests. And this just enables us to test our code and make sure it is running correctly. So for that, we can then add a new folder called tests. And then within that, I'm going to be testing some of my calculations. So we can go, and go in and do calculations. And then within that calculations, I then need a new file. And we'll call this uh, the petrophysics test, petrophysics.py. And with this, I believe we need to add in an init.py file as well for PyTest to, to pick it up correctly. So now we've added our tests, we can also add extra things in here such as our documentation. If we're going to start displaying any images in our Streamlit app, then we may want to have an assets folder. And within that assets folder, we can then store images and then maybe have a new file in here called logo.png. So there's obviously nothing in this as it's, um, I've just created it on the, on the side here. So we can store all that in there. And if we want to control the CSS on our app, we can then say custom.css and then we can call upon that in the appropriate place as well. So that keeps all of our assets separate. So these are unlikely to change unless we're updating logos or updating CSS styles. So we can keep that all, all there. And we can keep going further. We can add some documentation in here. So generally when creating a, a library, we usually have a docs folder and then within that docs folder, we have our source and build directories and any files that are generated or needed for generating the help documentation. So that's all good and it's looking nice and clean. Our main code will be nice and clean as well once now that we've separated everything out. And if we're doing any calculations, then we can output the results to the output folder. And if we've got more data files, then we can read them in through the, the data subfolder here. So now that our app has been created or deployed or stored away and we come to our next app, then we don't really want to go through that whole process again of creating folders and subfolders and setting up test folders. So what we could do is leverage a template. And there's one library out there called Cookie Cutter, which allows us to create templates and also download and install templates directly into the folder that we are working within. So the first thing to do if you've not already got Cookie Cutter is to install it. And we can do that just through pip install. This is a great little tool, especially if you're building new Python libraries or if you're building new Streamlit apps as in this case, then we can use Cookie Cutter to create that template and folder structure for us within a few minutes or well within a minute depending on how many questions you're asked. So what I've done is created my own cookie cutter streamlet template which you can find down in the description below. You can go to that URL uh, on GitHub and then you can take that URL and we can call upon cookie cutter and we paste in the address of the GitHub repository. And we can run that in a minute. What you'll see is that we're asked a number of questions here. So what is the name of our Streamlit app? Well, we can call this um, Andy's app. And then who's it by? Well, offer by default, it's going to go to Andy McDonald. So I can leave that blank. The project slug, which is important when we come on to working with our readme file. So this, some of these parameters are picked up automatically and added into the readme and license information for this particular template. So what is the description of this app? Well, we'll keep it very simple. This is my awesome Streamlit app. And again, I'm just accept accepting some of the defaults. Now we could include a streamlit.configuration if we want. So if we say why for yes, it will add in a configuration. If we've got any secrets such as passwords or keys, we may want to put them in a separate secrets.toml file. So in this case, I'm going to select no. So if we want to include pages for a multi-page app, I can say yes. And do we want to include tests? Yes. 
What about the source directory? Yes. So we've done nine questions there, and you can see that over on the left-hand side in the data browser, we now have an app called Andy's App, and we also have all of the structure that we've seen previously and some more files. For example, we've got the requirements.txt, we've got the readme, and you'll see that it's already got the name of the app, so Andy's app, who is it by, and the description of this. We can see that we've got a basic example here in app.py. If uh, y is equal to y, then we're going to import our sidebar. Uh, so this is just a very simple case of uh, just importing it um, if we've set that up. We've got our tests that are already set up here. So we've got our tests here, simple maths. We've got our source, pages, output folder ready for our data, and input data, and also our streamlet configuration. We can then add in some settings as well to this particular streamlet app if we wanted to. All that was created within nine questions and under half a minute if you went through it a little bit quicker and this is just an easy way to create that template without having to recreate it again so we could run that whole process again and in this case if we say do that again and we'll say yes to that because uh, we're going to re-download it so i'll go new app and offer name and we can say project slug as it stays that and we've got a description if i say no to including that no to including the secrets no to including the multi-page yes to including tests and no to the source directory then we've created a new folder a new app folder here and we can see that we've got less folders than we have up above so we don't have our pages folder we don't have our source folder but we do have our tests folder and this is just a handy way to choose what you want. So you may, may only be having a very small app, but if you're wanting the multi-page app with multiple functions, multiple classes, so then you can go all the way and include all of these folders if you really need to. So you can check out that cookie cutter template down in the description below with the link to the GitHub repository. And if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content from this channel, click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So until next time, bye for now.